What's up everybody, welcome back to DKTR. My name is Darion, and today we're going to be checking out the brand new Apple M2 MacBook Air, which on paper seems like a phenomenal laptop, but it has a couple significant flaws. As you all probably already know, Apple recently released the new M2 series MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, claiming major performance increases from their already impressive predecessors of the M1 series. With these supposed performance increases, they also came with a significant price increase, with the base M2 MacBook Air retailing for $1200 US compared to the M1's $1000 price tag. Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that the base M2 MacBook Air is not worth its price increase and is in some ways inferior to the 2020 M1 MacBook Air. Before we get into the performance and what's holding it back, let's first talk about the design and features of the M2 Air and how they differ from that of the M1 Air. Starting off with the M1 Air, we have a 720p camera on the top, as well as a 13.3 inch liquid retina display that measures 2560 horizontal pixels by 1600 vertical pixels. The top row of function keys as well as the touch ID row is half sized and the speakers are located on the left and right of the keyboard. On the left side of the device there are two USB-C ports capable of high speed data transfer, however one of them must be used to power the device, and on the right side there is a headphone jack. The M1 Air has a tapered wedge design which means it's thick in the back and gets thinner as it goes along towards the front. It weighs 2.8 pounds and has 400 nits maximum brightness. And the M1 MacBook Air is available in a silver, space gray, and a gold. And in the box, you will receive the M1 MacBook Air, a USB-C cable for charging, and a 30 watt USB-C power adapter. On the M2 Air, the notch is here to stay, and now it houses a superior 1080p webcam, as well as a 0.3 inch larger liquid retina display that measures 2560 pixels horizontally by 1664 pixels vertically. The M2 Air has much smaller bezels for your viewing pleasure, and now has a full-size function row and touch ID button, as well as a larger horizontal trackpad, but the vertical trackpad is still larger on the M1 Air. The speakers are now hidden in the hinge rather than the sides of the keyboard. Originally, I believed this would cause muffled sound, but after listening to both extensively, I've found out that the M2 Air's hidden speaker are louder and clearer. On the left side, there are two Thunderbolt USB-C ports, as well as a dedicated MagSafe power port that is capable of fast charging. On the right side, there is a headphone jack and unfortunately no SD card slot. The M2 Air has chosen to go with a squared, non-wedged design with rounded corners that allows it to be overall thinner than the M1 Air, as well as weighing less, weighing 2.7 pounds. It also has a higher maximum brightness rated at 500 nits. I much prefer this design and feel that this laptop is much easier to carry around. The M2 MacBook Air is available in a space gray, silver, midnight, and starlight color option. And in the box, you will receive the M2 MacBook Air, as well as a USB-C to MagSafe 3 cable that is braided in the colorway you chose for the laptop. And then finally, a 30 watt USB-C power adapter. You can upgrade this power adapter to either a 35 watt double USB power adapter or a 67 watt USB-C power adapter for an additional $20. Now we are going to quickly compare the webcams of these two laptops. So this is the webcam and microphone quality of the M1 MacBook Air. This has a 3 microphone array and 720 pixel camera. So this is the webcam and microphone quality of the M2 MacBook Air. This also has a 3 microphone array as well as an upgraded 1080p camera. And then this is the camera and microphone quality you will receive if you use the new feature of macOS Ventura Continuity Camera, which is where you use your iPhone camera as your webcam. For reference, I am using the iPhone 13 Pro, and all you have to do is just stick it onto the back of your Mac using a Belkin mount, which is coming soon. I have put together an infographic summarizing all of the noticeable design changes between the M1 and M2 MacBook Air, so feel free to pause the video to read through it again. Now that we've broken down all of the differences in design between the M1 and M2 MacBook Air, let's talk about the performance. As many of you have probably heard, the 256GB M2 MacBook Air has seen a significant reduction to the speed of its SSD. This is because Apple reduced the amount of its SSD NAND chips from two 128GB chips to a single 256GB chip. This is only true of the 256GB version of the M2 Air and Pro, so if you upgrade your storage to 512GB or greater, you will not experience this issue. To see how this change will affect the performance, let's run some tests and compare the results to that of the M1 MacBook Air. First, we will render the exact same 5.5 minute video at 4K 24 frames per second on both the M1 and M2 MacBook Air. 
Surprisingly, the M1 finished first, taking 2 minutes and 5 seconds to complete the render, where it took the M2 2 minutes and 29 seconds to finish. This means that the M2 MacBook Air took 20% more time to complete the render than the M1 MacBook Air. Utilizing Blackmagic Design's disk speed test, we are going to see just how the removal of the second NAND chip affected the M2 SSD speed. As you can see, we are averaging around 1600 megabytes per second for write speed and 1500 for read speed. This seems okay until you compare it to that of the M1 MacBook Air, which averages at around 2400 megabytes per second for write speed and 2700 for read speed. This shows that the M1 MacBook Air has a 51% faster write speed and a whopping 87% faster read speed than the M2 MacBook Air, making the SSD speed of the M2 MacBook Air more comparable to that of the 2016 MacBook Pro than it is to the M1 MacBook Air. Fortunately, it's not all negative for the M2. When using Cinebench's rendering test to compare the CPU performance of the two chips, we notice a 21% performance increase in multi-cord rendering and a 5% performance increase in single-core rendering. This isn't exactly what Apple claimed when they said it would be 40% faster than the M1 series, however, the exact laptop they used to test that was not disclosed and it may have been the 10-core GPU model. Since unlike the M2 MacBook Pro, the M2 MacBook Air is a fanless design, you will experience some degree of thermal throttling. For my testing, this becomes an issue if you are doing CPU intensive tasks for 10 minutes or more because the CPU will greatly reduce its speed in order to cool itself down. If you are doing GPU intensive tasks, you have around 6 or 7 minutes before the GPU itself will start slowing down in order to cool itself. This is not a new issue and was also present in the M1 MacBook Air and it has a similar fix. You can install a third party thermal pad for around 15 US dollars that will help diffuse the heat and greatly reduce thermal throttling. Max Tech did a great video installing and testing these thermal pads and showed that the M2 MacBook Air with these thermal pads can actually marginally outperform the M2 MacBook Pro with its fan cooled design. Properly configured, the M2 MacBook Air is definitely the superior laptop to the M1, but in order to do this, you would need to spend an extra $200 on top of the already $200 price increase from the M1. This would make the M2 a $1,400 laptop, which is a lot of money to justify spending. Personally, for me to be comfortable with the M2 MacBook Air, I would not only upgrade to 512 gigabytes of storage, I would also upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM for an additional $200. This would mean that the M2 MacBook Air is a $1,600 laptop, and at that point, you may want to start considering the $2,000 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro. Now, which laptop do I think is for you? The only people that I would recommend the base M2 MacBook Air to are people who are in love with the design and only really use the laptop for web surfing and multimedia consumption. It does have some cool upgrades like a 1080p camera, but macOS Ventura's continuity camera kind of makes this feature irrelevant. But the updated speaker system is definitely nice to have, and having two USB-C ports as well as a dedicated power port is a lifesaver in certain scenarios. If you deal with light video and photo editing and are on a budget, the M1 MacBook Air is definitely a great choice for you. It will outperform the base M2 in certain categories, and you can find it refurbished for around $800, or if you want it brand new, it'll only cost you around $1,000. However, if you deal with more intensive workloads and like the design of the M2, you may want to consider the 512GB version of the M2 MacBook Air, and if you really need to, add the extra 8GB of RAM for an additional 200 Finally, if you have some extra money to spare, and you want the best Apple laptop currently available, the 14 and 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro are a great option for photo editing, video editing, and 3D rendering. If you are interested in learning about all of the new features of the upcoming macOS Ventura, I will be making a detailed video breaking down everything within the next couple of days, so stay tuned. As always, links to anything seen or mentioned in this video can be found in the description down below. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you all so much for watching DKTR. I'll see you all in the next one.